Hi, my name is Kaz Riley, and this is a Hypnosis 247 Live Network, and this is Trancing in the Sheets. And with me today, uh, I have uh, the Master of Pendulums. Uh, but before I go over to him, uh, just to let you know that when you join the network, that you were sent uh, a link. And if you go and click on that link, then there's a really wonderful surprise for you. You have got a $200 gift card that you can use towards discounts on hotels, um, uh, car hire, and uh, other things, I think, as well. So uh, don't miss out. Just go ahead and activate that. And if you'd like to know how travel cards and hotel discounts and things can help your business, then just put the word solutions in the box below, it's that simple. So, trancing in the sheets with me today, I have James Hazelrig, and today we're gonna to talk about his uh, Tri Pendulum. James is well known for storytellings and lots of other things, but this is James's very own invention, I believe. So, thank you for joining us today, James, and welcome to Trancing in the Sheets. Thank you so much. I can't take complete credit for the Tri Pendulum. I, I got the idea from a book of uh, magic, actually, by the magician uh, Banachek, a.k.a. Steve Shaw. And he, he wrote a brief description of it. Uh, at the end, he said, be careful with this. It's real magic. And I said, well, I have to try this. So I, I built one. Um, and I, I eventually, when I was starting to really get into it, I contacted Banachek and I, I mentioned that I was doing this and, you know, asked him if he had any insights or pointers or tips. And he said, oh, I've never done it. I've never used one. I just included it in the book for completeness. <laughs> so, uh, so I can't quite say that I invented it, but I'm happy to stick my name on it and call it a hazel rig tripendulum. Uh, and I did name it Tri Pendulum uh, because Triple Pendulum, it turns out, is some very specific thing in physics. Oh wow! So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how how long how well how long have you been using Tri Pendulums then? Gosh, uh, I think it's about ten years now. Um, I you know I didn't really take note of exactly when. I guess I could go back and reconstruct exactly when I, I started, but about 10 years. Cool. And, and do you, is it something that you use with clients or just for fun or what do you use your tri pendulums for? Yes. Yeah, so I, I use the tri pendulum in a couple of different ways. For one, it's, it's my go-to when I'm starting a presentation because it, it illustrates the mind body connection and it really has kind of that, that wow factor to start things with back when I was doing stage shows, I would often use it uh, as kind of a filler as people were filtering in, um, you know, before the show officially started when I'm doing street hypnosis, I'll, uh, I, I do street hypnosis a little bit differently from most people rather than walking around with a sign I arrange to have a place where I can sit down. For instance, at a street festival, I put up my signs and then I sit down and wait for people to come to me. Well, while I'm waiting, the tri pendulum is a great thing to use because it, again, attracts curiosity and attention. Of course, I've done it likewise, uh, table to table, doing kind of like table magic with it. And I have one hanging in my office and I see that you have one hanging in your office as well. I do. I do. That, that one um, has been her pride of place in my office uh, for just over a year now since I brought it back after um, buying one off you in, uh, in Las Vegas last year. And this year, um, I've, well, I've used it so much and I've had so much fun with it and my clients absolutely love it. Um, but I bought a second one. So I, I, I am a, uh, a double tri pendulum owner just to uh, just to really confuse, <laughs> <laughs> confuse matters but it it is just such a cool thing i mean i am a big fan of um 
kind of uh, well what my husband calls hypnotized so spirals watches uh crystals kaleidoscopes you can probably see behind me i think i've got um i use you know all kinds of things um i think next to next to the tripendulum is probably my sonic screwdriver and a, and a, that, i think that's a kaleidoscope actually that's on there but uh which is pretty cool <laughs> So yeah, so in my in my hypno kit there is a, a sonic screwdriver, screwdriver and the tripendulum, and um, it, it's if I just hold it up I don't, for anybody that hasn't seen one of these, um, you can see it's very different from the usual pendulum where normally it's just one, isn't it, that's on a chain or a, a piece of cord, but here, funnily enough, being a tripendulum, we have three. Uh, which is attached onto this uh, rather lovely piece of dowel. So um, why don't you talk me through, I mean, obviously I've been using this for a year and I, and I would love to share how I've used this a bit, but mm -hmm. um, why don't you talk me through so that everybody else can see and also it'll help me to remember and just make sure that I'm using it properly. <laughs> right, right, right. So I find that the, the first thing is to go ahead and, and hold it with one hand and, and gently with the other hand, just try to get the other, uh, those chains to stay as still as they can. Okay, let um, because I can just move this down a tiny sure, bit. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, how's and that? It is, it is a little tricky and I realize that as I'm holding this one, uh, these, uh, the stones, several of the stones are below the screen, but you know, that's, that's just how it happens. And so you get them as still as you possibly can and then hold it with, uh, with both hands. There we go. And then you always set the frame. You explain, look, these are going to move no matter what, no matter how hard I try. Uh, they're always going to move around a little bit, but you're smart people. You know the difference between signal and noise, between something that moves on purpose mm -hmm. and something that moves randomly. So right now, mine are kind of wiggling around a little bit. Yours are even much more still. Excellent. And so then I'll usually pick out the middle one, and I'll ask the middle one to start going front to back. And right now I can see yours was going a little side to side. And... Uh, there we go. People can probably right. see with the chain a little bit that mine is starting to purposefully move front to back. The others are still kind of wiggling around a little bit. Okay, this one's going front to back now. Front. Excellent, excellent. Front to back. It is a little bit of a challenge sometimes to see it on, on uh, camera, but yeah, we can definitely see it's going front to back, front to back, front to back. Maybe. And the other, man, your other two are really, really still. You actually have the better chain. These are the chains I used to use earlier, and um, I found that chain that I used this year, and I'm really, I'm seeing the difference, so I'm glad I made that change. Um, and so the thing is that my hands vibrate in some way to make that happen, and your hands are vibrating, but you're not aware of that vibration. Um, you simply set the intention and you don't have to say it out loud, but I, I like to so that people know what my intention is of that middle stone going front to back, front to back, front to back, front to back. Now, um, then a lot of times, and there's there's six patterns every stone can do, front to back, side to side, clockwise, counterclockwise, left front diagonal, right front diagonal. So there's like hundreds of combinations, but I, I like to to start off with that one front to back. And then usually I'll move over to the short one and say, hey, in my case, it's a green stone, side to side, green 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 side to side. Green side, to side. Sure. You're doing great. Be sure to remember to breathe. <sighs> breathe. And you know, it's a very meditative kind of process. You focus your mind and then relax. You focus and relax. And go. so now we've got that green one. Yeah, excellent. You're doing great. You're doing great. And I find it helps to kind of talk to them as if they were living beings. I realize that stones probably are not living beings. That depends on your, your belief set. Okay, so middle, but, back and forth. All right. Side to side. Right? Yeah, and I, I tell people when practicing to just let each one do its own thing, you know, and practice individually. And then eventually they can start building up to doing two or three at the same time. So uh, I don't know if people are going to be able to see this for mine, but they can see it for use. So how about if we make that long chain go in some kind of a circle? Okay. 
Okay, shall we go clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, I'm going to go anti-clockwise, being a Brit. Uh, right, anti-clockwise. I'm sorry. All right, I'll go right. counterclockwise since I'm American. So long chain, so, counterclockwise, long chain, counterclockwise, yeah. long chain, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. When I first started, I said Deishel and Wittershins. I don't and know if anybody can see this while it's going, but... Oh. I, yeah, I can kind of see it. I think, yeah, and people can probably see that my chain is moving around in that kind of circle, though, the, the stone itself. I do have a few videos um, available that are, you know, a little full body shot and, you know, a lot more, more clear what's going on there. there go. So the thing is that, of course, then with practice, you can get to where you can do two or three at the same time. Um, now... I understand you, you mentioned to me that a lot of times you'll hand it to your client. So what happens then? Well, it, it, it's like, like anything, you know, if they, I'll just move this back up with that. Thank you for that. So it had all three doing different things there, which is cool. Mm. Um, uh, my tripendulum or one of my tripendulums live, lives up there on the back of my wall. And what you can't see in this room is my client chair, or you maybe see a little bit is actually here. So, um, this chair is normally over there and they'll sit and they'll kind of look at it and it, they're kind of like, oh, what's that hanging on your wall? You know, and I'll say, aha, this is, <laughs> this is the Hazel Rig Tripendulum, which my wonderful friend from Austin, Texas, um, you know, uh, invented. Um, I, you, you did invent, well, sort created. of, <laughs> it's fine, yeah. created, yeah. Well, it's my story, so, uh, you Promoted. know, you it. <laughs> yeah. live your story, it's fine. <laughs> And, um, you know, and, and I'll take it down off the wall. It's just up there with a couple of clips and I'll hand it to them. And part, usually part of my pre-talk anyway is about the power of the mind and how our mind and body is, you know, how our mind affects our body. And often we use the, you know, the, the, the kind of the, that demonstration of hold out your arm, don't we? And, you know, we can show people how their thoughts can make their arm very strong or their arm very weak. But I also explain to them that, you know, it also happens you know, but by with minuscule muscle movements, and actually that can affect just how we hold our posture and how we think and how we feel. And and then I'd say well, the child pendulum really helps you to kind of demonstrate that. So, but that's that's one of the places that I start with it is just showing them that they can literally think about moving. And um, often, sometimes I'll start just with a single pendulum, but they can actually, even if they're not doing three different things with three different pendulums at the same time, they can say, right, this one, I'm going to move this way. And then we might stop it. And then we'll say this one, we're going to move in a circle. So they'll then move that one in a circle. This one, we might do something else with it. And then we'll start doing two and three and all that kind of stuff. And what that does for a lot of my clients is it gives them a much stronger belief in the power of their mind, especially if they're coming in with a physical issue because then it starts to show that, you know, I explained to them about it's, it's essentially an IMR movement that's traveling down in, in a tiny little ways. Um, and that's then being kind of picked up by the dowel, but actually it shows that we can do many things. We don't, it's not just about doing one thing we can actually think about and our body will respond to do three different movements at once rather than just one or two. And, you know, as they get better and better at it. The other um, client group that I use this a lot with, of course, is children who they absolutely love it because it's such fun. I did have one that actually went home and made her own with a, a dowel and she got three different size rocks and used string nice. and had some. So that, you know, there's a little girl in Yorkshire that was inspired <laughs> to make a rock tri pendulum uh, on the back of seeing yours, which I think is a, a wonderful story. But it's 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 such a cool thing you know i think i could see this being in the same kind of kit you know in terms of you can't be a real hypnotist unless you've got a pocket walk <laughs> um, i think maybe in the future it might be you can't be a real a real hypnotist unless you've got a tri-pendulum and a pocket watch so i i, I like that idea I like you that. know that that thing about using it with children is is amazing and what i've found uh it took me about three weeks to get any good at it and then it took me longer to train myself to quit moving my head around uh, in fact <laughs> i was i was going back through the first videos that i made with it i'm going front to back front to back side to side side to, and <laughs> and people pointed it out i didn't even know i was moving my head in that way but yeah. people pointed out there oh it just moves however you move your head i'm like no no that's not what's happening the head yeah but 
and you know most uh, most adults pick it up fairly quickly, much faster than I did. I've never known anybody who took as long as I did, because everybody that I've shown it to has seen it, so they know it can can be done. Whereas mm -hmm. all I had was a description in a book. I had to figure it out. Children pick it up instantly. Mm -hmm. And I even, um, I was wandering around uh, one day at, um, and it was actually the kind of the student day at a Renaissance festival. Um, and I was using that because my, my normal gig is playing music and singing songs. And a lot of those songs aren't really appropriate for children. So, um, so instead of, you know, being on stage and singing songs, I was going around entertaining all of these students there. Well, some of the local uh, Ren Faire kids came up and they were fascinated by it and they wanted to play around with it. So I'd let them play around with it. Well, they, the next day I'm busy playing music. They come over to me and they said, Hey, can, can we play with your stick? Can we borrow that thing? I'm like, yeah, sure. Have fun. The thing is they had watched my entire routine and picked up on my tip lines to get people to give me money when I was done showing it off. And they were walking around doing the entire routine perfectly better than I did it and getting money. <laughs> and, you know, they pick it up instantly. Of course, I, I told them, hey, you have to come up with your own tip lines, kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> That's fantastic. So no, I mean it, it appeals. It, it's just such a cool thing, isn't it? And you know, I have used it as well. Um, where you know, um, I've had a client where I've been showing them that, and then I can say you can start to ask it questions, or you can ask me subconscious questions, and you can use. Well, we've had rather than having one way for yes and one way for no, where we've used the different stones for yes and no, and uh, I'm not sure, which was pretty cool, and that worked. Oh, yeah. Huh. And that, that was just on a bit of a whim one day where um, we, we'd, we'd got this, you know, like here. And for anybody that has never used a pendulum, um, we're, not, we're not kind of dowsing here. We're, we're, we're kind of amplifying messages from the subconscious mind, essentially, aren't we? That, that's what a, a pendulum, or how I, would you, how I would describe it. I won't put words in anybody else's mouth. So we've got this knowledge, yes, no. Um, maybe or I don't know in, in a circle that that tends to be how we're taught as hypnotists how to use a pendulum and it just occurred to me that if we were getting these things to do different things then we could actually have a yes signal a no signal and I don't know signal so depending on which one then started to move and it just made it was just a really fun you know, I had the client that that really would have appealed to and as we were doing that you know the different pendulums were kind of just going off um, according to whether the answer was yes or no, or she wasn't sure. Um, I can't remember which one was which, actually. I think this was yes and this was no, and I think we went just down down, down the line kind of thing. But that, that worked super well, which kind of surprised me, actually. It was just a bit of an experiment that we ran with it. That's amazing. You know, I've, I've never tried that. I always tell people, you can get all the information you want from a single pendulum. Uh, but it is intriguing that you that you found those other ways to work with it. And, you know, just the other day on uh, my, my Facebook group, which is called Tripendulum Ambassadors, uh, Bob Burns proposed um, triparts where he says, well, and, and he, he kind of, he hinted at it and then made other people guess at, you know how Bob is, right? Yeah. And so, so I, I said, well, I think what, what you would be doing is assigning each pendulum to a different part and then maybe having a discussion you know it's like okay so so which parts are okay with this please you know give me a yes and which parts aren't give me a no or an i don't know and so then as they're moving around you would kind of say okay when they're all saying yes then they're all in agreement or maybe they're all going to say no, you know but but trying to find that that harmony between them Again, I've never used it that way with okay. a client. I, I find that, you know, generally there's easier ways to get to, to parts stuff. But, you know, uh, uh, Bob is really the, the, the genius of that kind of thing. He's the one who came up with the swan. And uh, so I, I'm excited to see what other people are doing with it. I, th I think it's, it's like anything, isn't it? If you create a technique or a way of doing something and then give it to other people, they expand and grow upon it don't they you know and that's what 
that's what takes a great idea into a really magnificent one because then it gets kind of the many inputs. So where, if somebody's looking at this and thinking, I need one of these in my office, uh, where can they find one? So um, the, the website for that is try, T-R-I, pendulum, P-E-N-D-U-L-U-M dot com. And that'll take them right to the page where they can order their tripendulum. They can pick out the colors they want. Um, and then I'll, I'll custom make it for them and ship it to them. Fantastic. And are you doing that uh, internationally or just domestically? Or Yes. I'm, I'm, I, I have investigated what it will take to ship it uh, internationally. And uh, cross my fingers, I've got it worked out. Um, and uh, so we'll be able to, to start shipping those internationally because I know a lot of people all around the world have been asking about them. I, well, I, I can imagine. I mean, they're just fascinating. They look great. They're, they're so useful. And, you know, I kind of think it's a bit like as, um, as Harry Potter, you know, and all, all the wizards and witches have their very own wands. You know, you're essentially providing us all with our very own special tri-pendulums that have been custom made for each individual person, which... It's a pretty cool thing, isn't it? Wands for hypnotists. It, it is. What, now, what's funny is that actually when I'm, when I'm doing like the table magic thing, or, or a lot of times I'll say, he wants to see a not magic trick. This is not magic. It's not a trick. This is not a magic wand. There are no phoenix feathers in the middle of it, no bits of unicorn horn, no mythical creatures were harmed in the creation of this perfectly normal 100% vegan stick. Uh, so I, I I demystify it, and yet it is it is kind of like your wand, you yeah. know. It's 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 fun. That's it. Well, I guess in a way as well, people then are listening to what you're saying when you say that, and I'm thinking maybe it's magical. <laughs> you know, that's that's true, and and I I find that you can do a lot of a lot of things that seem magical as long as you're saying this isn't magical. Really, it's not magical. And, uh, and then there's kind of a certain point where I go, okay, this part I really can't explain with science. So maybe it is magic. There we go. There we go. Um, thank you so much for coming and talking tri-pendulums uh, with me on Chanting in the Sheets. Uh, it's, they are absolutely fascinating. And, um, you know, if any, and actually I use them sometimes for self-hypnosis as well. I forgot to mention that because they're very useful for focus and you know asking my own subconscious mind some interesting questions sometimes and uh, we get all kinds of uh, waves and swirls coming out of the tri-pendulum then but thank you so much for being here um you you know i adore you and uh, i think the world of you and think you're an amazing hypnotist tri-pendulum or not um so thanks ever so much for uh, being here today james well, thank you so much, Kaz. You know, um, I hold you in very high esteem and it's just amazing work you're doing. And I, I really love the way that you're also shining that spotlight on hypnotists around the world. You oh. are a wonderful leader for our community. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for the compliment. <laughs> as we would both say. So if you're um, uh, enjoying what you're seeing on Chanting in the Sheets, and I sincerely hope that you are, um, please let us know. You know, if you've got any questions, then please let us know your questions um, about anything to do with hypnosis or any of the work that I do with sex or sexuality. You can get me on any of my social medias uh, at, at Trancing Sheets or you can email me or just put a, a, a comment or a question in any of the boxes below. Um, but please feel free to do that. And also, as you're already aware, I'm sure, I am in fact only one of eight amazing hypnotists that are running these shows. Um, and in particular, one of the magnificent ones, the role I've missed, but particularly magnificent, is of course the world's fastest hypnotist, Sean Michael Andrews who has been interviewing all kinds of wonderful people and has had some really, really interesting conversations, which I'm sure you won't want to miss. So don't forget to tune into his show and I'll see you next time on Trancing in the Sheets. Thanks for joining us.
Get ready.